when the contract's not clear, when it's vague, that's what can lead to litigation. You might take more risk on a bigger deal, there's a higher reward or uh, on the business side of it, or you may take less risk. How do you advise your clients on shifting risk away from them, whether it's indemnity or something else. So a lot of that depends on what side you are on the contract, your ability to do that, but. This is Maestro Minute, the show that discusses all things real estate, sharing interviews with the most successful people in the industry. Hear from their perspective and what they are doing to achieve success. Get exclusive tips on how you can also succeed in real estate. Maestro Minute is brought to you by Maestro Development. Here's your host, Nareg Muradian. What type of stuff do you work on to minimize risk for your clients on the legal side? Like, what are some good things that we could talk about? So hopefully, um, if you're transacting business, uh, whether real estate or construction, hopefully you have a contract in place that's in writing. Hopefully you're also, as a company, you're incorporated whether you're a, a S Corp, C Corp, LLC, those are all things you can protect yourself personally from liability. Uh, but then taking it a step further in the negotiation of the deal, it's kind of a risk benefit analysis. So you might take more risk on a bigger deal because um, there's a higher reward or uh, on the business side of it, or you may take less risk. I have some clients that um, based on their um, business plan and model, uh, they can't afford to take risks, so they they shift a lot of the risk to the other side in these deals, um, which includes everything from like insurance, uh, indemnification, and limitation of liability. Those are the three areas uh, I like to focus in. And I have a whole team of real estate transaction lawyers that help draft the agreements. Um, and I will come in later if it gets to litigation. Um, but those are the three areas like really emphasize to uh, beef up your contracts. So what what do you see in contracts that are always kind of failing or being litigated from your clients? Are there like one or two things that always they're missing? You know, like, is it is there a certain thing that you should make sure it's in your contract? Yeah, well, hopefully those agreements aren't drafted by me or my office. But uh, when the contract's not clear, when it's vague, um, that's what can lead to um, litigation. Um, the more grayer you have, uh, the more area there is to fight and have a dispute with the other side. And so that includes a, a, like everything from like indemnification. Um, and I can talk about what that means um, to what are your rights and re responsibilities on the agreement? What are the you know representations and warranties you're supposed to fulfill pursuant to the agreement? And uh, the ones that I often see in litigation, the, the contracts or the disputes, usually those terms are not clear and there's a gray area. Um, but in this, you know, uh, climate that we're in with, um, you know, post-COVID, uh, uh, potential recession, are we in a recession? I think people are counting their pennies more. They're taking, um, they're filing more lawsuits. I've seen some lawsuits that are just completely frivolous. And I've been able to get clients out of uh, either for a nuisance settlement amount or um, dismissed eventually, which has been great. But uh, I think people are more inclined when the economy goes down to file more lawsuits. And that's what I'm seeing now. How do you advise your clients on shifting risk away from them, whether it's indemnity or something else? How do you, what's the best way to shift risk away? So a lot of that depends on what side you are on the contract, your ability to do that. But if you have a, uh, a well, so let me use an example. So if you're a, a commercial developer or you're a commercial landlord, um, you have tenants and you want to make sure that those tenants, um, or if you're a contractor, you want to make sure that your subcontractor indemnifies you for any claims uh, that arise out of their conduct um, or uh, their omission or their lack of doing something, um, which brings up a third party claim, someone else. So someone gets either hurt on the job and it's because some tools were left behind by a subcontractor in an area it shouldn't have been. Um, and a lawsuit's filed later as, as the contractor um, or even as a sub, if you have an indemnification in, that, in your contract, that will protect you where then you have to either file a cross complaint against the contractor or the tenant to defend you and indemnify you in the lawsuit. So that's one really good way of doing it. Um, also, 
limitation of liability clauses are a great area where you can um, limit your exposure in litigation. So things like loss of business, lost profits, claims for those things, um, general damages, consequential damages, uh, incidental damage, those are kind of legal terms, but basically damages that have arised uh, you know, out of the transaction. You yeah. can limit that as yeah. a commercial uh, landlord um, or as a contractor uh, in real estate. I sign a lot of contracts. I feel like if I would send them to you, you'd be like, don't sign it because obviously it's, it's, in, it's not in my favor, right, for my business. Um, when you run in that situation, how do you, is it like you said, risk versus reward? Like I find that I do sign a lot of contracts, but there's a risk there, but the reward is greater and that all those items in that contract basically get activated if something goes bad. So my job is always to make sure that like projects don't go bad, right? All, there's always stuff that happens. What would you say to, like, to me, like, hey, uh, uh, like over risking the, the company, like when you're just signing those contracts? Cause like, you know, like I've worked with large firms, right? And, and obviously they have a team of attorneys and me, I'm a small guy. I don't have a team of attorneys. Like if anything, I have you, right? Um, and you're a big guy, but how would you advise someone who's in a small business that's doing development and they're going up against these bigger entities? Yeah, that's a good question. Um... First is you should be asking me to look at your contracts. Uh, your, your fee's too high, <laughs> I'll give you a, a special uh, family discount. Family discount. Um, but, um, you know, it really just depends. Like, I'm not saying don't take any risk. As a business to function, you have to take risk. So I get that. And uh, a good business lawyer also, I think, understands that. So our job is to advise you of the risks. And then ultimately, you make a business decision. So, um, uh, you know, you don't want an attorney to say, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this, because then you'll never do business. Yeah. So business is a, you know, risk, you're taking risks, you're an entrepreneurial and you've become successful because you've taken these risks. Um, so you have to take risks, but as lawyers, typically we're risk adverse. And so, um, you know, like the, our job is to advise you of the risk, but like, it's also good to know who you're getting in bed with, so to speak, who the other side is that you're dealing with. And if they have a good reputation, you have a solid relationship with them, chances are um, if, so, if there's something arises, a dispute, you guys are gonna work it out um, because of your relationship. It's it really everything comes down to relationships, whether it's uh, real estate, construction, attorney, um, it's really down to your relationships. But it's when those go bad is when you gotta lean back on the contracts. So as a small company, you know, you might not have as much leverage, uh, but at the same time, um, you know, you, if you're, if you have the, uh, like I, I have a couple clients that pick and choose what deals they work on because they kind of, uh, you know, they're like the, the cream of the crop and they can choose even though they're not a big company. And sometimes if the risk is, uh, too high, they're just, they pass on that project. Um, so, um, you know, the, uh, I know you and I know that you're, you have good relationships and um, I, I'm not worried about you. Uh, but for those other small businesses, you want to just make sure, you know, you could, you look at the indemnification. If you get an attorney, um, get a good lawyer, a business attorney who understands your company, you understands your culture, your business, and, um, you know, have them take a pass at it. Uh, there's an old adage that, uh, that says, like, don't step over a dollar to pick up a dime. Sometimes it's a good investment. But you got to have the right, you know, team in place, the right partner. I look at my relationship with my clients. I'm a partner on their team. They might have, you know, uh, a real estate developer, might have an architect or a CPA. Then I'm, you know, the lawyer on the team and we collaboratively kind of give the yeah. information. You got to do your due yeah. diligence, you know. Yeah. So that's good. I, I agree with you 100 um, percent. What if you have a what if you're in a contract and the other person on the other side of the contract keeps violating the contract. At what point do you feel is necessary to kind of raise the flag and get, you know, legal advice of, involved? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question because if you don't defend your contract, there's an argument that you've waived your rights. And so if you end up later filing lawsuit against them for a breach of contract, they could argue in their defense that you waived your rights and you accepted the additional terms or the modification of the terms because you never objected to it. Um, you all, you want to include in your contract like a notice provision if someone's in breach also.
to give notice. If you don't give notice within a certain time, then you've waived your claim to that breach. Um, but you, you absolutely should stand up, you know, uh, for your rights. Um, you know, once you get, you don't need to get lawyer involved right away, but you should let the other side know in writing that they, they're in breach, that they're violated the terms of the agreement, um, and they're on notice. And then later, just depending on like how much you've been damaged, you can file the lawsuit. Uh, breach of contract, statute of limitations is four years for a written contract. You want to always kind of keep that in mind. A verbal contract, oral contracts, two years from the date you found out about the breach. So, uh, you know, anything beyond that, you're, you're barred anyways. So, you, but you want to, I mean, as a business to your bottom line, you might not be able to wait. Yeah. You, might, you might not have no choice except to go after them yeah. because it's affecting your bottom line. Thanks for tuning in to the Maestro Minute podcast. Make sure to rate this podcast if you found it helpful, share it with a friend that could use it, and follow us on all major podcast platforms. The Maestro Minute, powered by Maestro Development.